Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. It's that time again, and we're on our marks, set and ready to go with topical issues to trash out. Welcome to The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. And as you know, there is never a dull moment on The Advocate. I'll be hitting the tracks by crusading for our looted funds to be returned back to the country, which could be some form of amnesty. Rukewe, our women's rights advocate, joins us virtually and she speaks on the recently distributed COVID-19 vaccines. She's asking, which way Nigeria? Our first lady, Treasure, we'll be talking about fixing our politics. Evans is definitely shaking tables as he speaks on the Nigerian woman. Are they safe? We'll find out in his advocacy. And lastly, our seasoned journalist, Jumoke, as always, uh, she's asking, should we sell our Sorok? In fact, who collects rent money for our Sorok? Now, wow, I can't wait to hear this particular one. Nigeria, my beloved country. We'll be back in a moment. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Let them bring the money. Now, this is going to be very controversial. But then my preference is not to run away from controversies but to confront them. If it doesn't lead us in the direction of what we should do, it may at least make us understand what we should not contemplate doing. And I speak on a suggestion for a government program to persuade Nigerians who took our money to voluntarily bring some of those monies back to the country as some form of restitution in return for amnesty. Aha, you see now why it is controversial. It's like I'm asking for us to take some steps that will encourage citizens to steal our money and then bring it back home in return for forgiveness while they go enjoy the rest of the loot peacefully. Well, as if that is not what we already do in a more convoluted and grossly inefficient manner. The suggestion indeed raised a strong moral question. But rather than run away from that question, we should confront it. According to a Chatham House report in 2019, an estimated $582 billion has been stolen from Nigerians since independence. In today's money, that comes to about $4 trillion every year. To put that in context, and rather simplistically, I must say the capital expenditure budget for this year is $2.47 trillion. At 50% funding, We'll be lucky to close with 1.5 trillion performance. Meanwhile, some people are taking 4 trillion out of the system. So while the entire nation grapples with 1.5 trillion borrowed money to fund capital expenditure, 
a handful of Nigeria, Nigerians take four trillion away every year. We have been on the prosecution of Maina for about seven years. We don't know when that prosecution will end, if it will end. We have been speaking about the extradition of a former minister of petroleum for the past five years. Nasuki Gate is still in court. The former head of service case is still in court. And so are many corruption cases that have been in the court since OBJ days. When will they be concluded? At what cost? What will be the eventual judgment? If found guilty, and that is a big if, by the way, what will eventually be the judgment? And how much of the loot are we likely to be able to recover after 10 to 20 years of prosecution? This is what makes me think there may indeed be a case to review our approach to the issue of recovering funds already looted from us. At the current state of our system, I am not sure we have the capacity to bring a citizen who stole correct money to justice. Just take a look at the past four decades, and the answer is there blowing in the wind. What did you see? Okay, what about monies that have not been looted yet? Again, drawing from the Chatham House report, we can increase our capital expenditure by $4 trillion in real cash terms annually without borrowing, by simply blocking the looting of our commonwealth. Thus, the focus of our anti-corruption policy must shift from catching them after they have taken the money and then prosecuting them for the next decade. Rather, we must prevent them from being able to steal. My advocacy. We need to revisit our approach to getting back our looted funds. And we should not be averse to unconventional ways, including some form of amnesty as part of the pool of opinions. On the other side, we should dedicate 80% of our corruption fight to prevention and only 20% to catching and prosecuting looters for decades. Our current approach is not working. Prevention, keyword, prevention. Mm. To add to your list, <laughs> and maybe we should also involve deities. Yeah. If, if, if we yeah, can. Because you, you, talk about, you talk about us not running away from unconventional means. So why don't we involve traditional <laughs> practice <laughs> or using some of the deities to recover these funds? If you Or work. applying spiritism. Since physical oppression is failing us, I'm just saying. That's a weird one. You, you, you know, Metu's case has been sent back for a trial, for yes. example. After five years in the court process, retire will start. Maybe after retrial, we will go to appeal. After appeal again, we'll go to Supreme Court. When will it end? No, uh, How much money will when, be left by the time it ends? When retrial, a lot of times, is just to abandon the case, because I remember... Um, Senator Ojikalu, his case was also sent for retrial. Is he being trialed? His own case is even worse. He spent 13 years in the court system. <laughs> Before he was awarded 14 years and then sent out, you know. Okay, so what this present administration sold us during election was that they, they were going to rid the country of corruption. But have we really truly seen this happen? I recall that at some point last week, I asked myself, the way this country is going a borrowing, it doesn't look like three generations after us will be able to pay up. Okay, so this is a country that the same Okonjo Iwala, who's been celebrated globally, works for under OBJ and under Jonathan, right? Yeah. Yes. And they had paid up all our debts. Yes, sir. Now we're back as debtors. Yes. And all the people who looted us. See, we have been looted yes. as a and, people. And re-looted. Yes. And re-looted as a people. Yes. Are there, are just there. lounging mm. every day. Taking sure. new positions, sitting in the Senate, it's, sitting everywhere. Rukewe. It's very interesting. I liked uh, what Bola has said. Prevention is actually much cheaper than cure. And we haven't really done anything to do anything prevention in, in, our, in our looting system, if you will. Like you said, the politicians, they're recycled and there's no real justice. Even when they, they are caught and uh, red-handed, they have lawyers they keep going to court and the system just, um, it's crazy. Now, um, I know that they try to seize assets and even the asset-seizing people 
even there are now looters apparently I had you know Magu is already um, being prosecuted as well so who is checking where is the check in the system Buhari ran on corruption anti-corruption and um it's actually it's been said that probably this is the most corrupt of all the governments that have, have because everything is really really um, abysmal. Nothing is working in Nigeria, and of course all the monies that are brought they've not been brought back. And if they were, we haven't seen it. And you're talking four trillion, you know, <laughs> those amounts are staggering. But anyway, yes. we need to find a system, independent system, not necessarily from the government. Like the other time we talked to the advocates, we have chartered accountants, accounting firms that can trace the money, that can plug the leakages in the in the civil service, in all forms of government, there's leakages every day in the hospitals, in in, in the what's it called, in the in the school systems, the school board. In fact, I heard they used how much to feed children the other day and there was no evidence that it was properly spent. So this is where the problem is, plugging it from the roots and holding people accountable when they do still. Nothing has been done to show that we're serious. In China, you'll be hanged. In, oh, in Russia, well, because it, it, it looks like there are untouchables. Yeah. And so when the untouchables are behind the looting, then you can elongate their cases True. in court until you think the people are forgotten. And then you just, you know, just give them a slap on the wrist and then they go and away. The, the government always remembers to remind us of China when they're talking about clapping down on the freedoms of the people, like the internet yeah, and things. Yeah, but they don't They remember. never remember how they handled corruption of mm. government personnel. And then I remember <laughs> under Minister um, Obi Ezekwesili, we had um, due diligence. I wonder Madame what due happened. Process. Due process. Yes. We used Office to call her Madame Madame due, due process. process. Yeah. I wonder what happened mm -hmm. to you know due process in our procurement in government now. Because it tends to do the needful, doing the needful now. Mm -hmm. You know what that means? That means corruption. Wow. You understand? Do so we've gone needful. from due diligence to doing Do. the needful. <laughs> needful, yes. <laughs> you know, one of the former ministers Come said on. that. I'm sure you know who said that. When she said we we'll do the needful, okay. and that was for me, code word for corruption. Thank you. Um, well, Rukeve is up next after the break.